In this episode, let's have a listen to five different boom microphones that you might use for indoor dialogue that range from cardioid to hypercardioid. Let's have a listen. few notes before we dive into the comparison. First of all, we're recording all of these microphones in my unfinished basement, which is a studio, and I've got a sound blanket hanging over here. I've got concrete floors. I've got uh, plastic covering insulation on the ceilings, which is somewhat reflective, and I do have a rug underneath me here. I have all the microphones boomed just here out of frame, about 50 to 60 centimeters from my mouth. In each case, we're recording with the Sound Devices 633 mixer recorder. Now, I realize that's kind of a higher end recorder than most of us are using. I'm in the process of doing a review of that. If you'd like to hear what it sounds, all of these mics sound like recorded through a more prosumer type of recorder, in, in this case specifically, the Tascam DR60D Mark II, Go ahead and check down below. I've got a link to my website where you can listen to the WAV files of all the recordings through all of the mics, both into the Sound Devices recorder and into the Tascam. Now, when it comes to the noise tests, what we're really testing here is a practical noise floor. What I mean by that is that, yes, it's recording room tone in addition to any self noise generated by the microphone and the recorder. For the noise test, we use the Zoom F8, which has quite clean preamplifiers. So we kept that variable static, so it's the same in all of the different microphones. The room is the same, the only difference is the microphone, and that again is a practical noise floor. In each of these cases where you hear the audio from the microphone, we did no processing aside to loudness normalize the audio to minus 23 LUFS, which is a European broadcast standard for TV loudness. You're now listening to the Samson C02, which is a super cardioid, small diaphragm condenser microphone. A super cardioid is a sort of a middle ground between cardioid and hypercardioid. That is to say it has a tight pickup pattern, but not quite as tight as hypercardioid and a little bit tighter than cardioid. So it actually is a very, very good, I think versatile pickup pattern for recording indoor dialogue. This particular mic, comes in at $110 US for two mics. So it actually comes in a kit of two. That is an amazing price for a microphone of actually of this quality, I think. Um, it does not have a high pass filter, um, again, because it's a fairly budget priced mic. It comes in at 170 grams weight, which is, you know, okay. In terms of build quality, it's surprisingly good. It does come with these sort of simple shock mount clips for booming on a boom pole or on a microphone stand. And this is the only one that actually came with any sort of shock mount. So that was actually pretty interesting. They're not the most perfect or most um, advanced shock mounts, but they do a decent job. In terms of power, the microphone does require 48 volts phantom power like most small diaphragm condenser microphones, and it does not have an internal battery option. In terms of our practical noise floor test, this was recorded with the Samson CO2 into a Zoom F8 recorder and all of the room tone that comes along with that, which is actually a fairly quiet room. I record in my basement here with a sound blanket over here on this side and uh, a rug right underneath me. And we got to minus 61 dB on the noise floor. So that's once it's normalized to minus 23 LUFS, which is the European broadcast standard for loudness. That's actually quite, pretty good. I'm normally aiming to get the noise floor under minus 60 dB. So this definitely falls in that category. In terms of handling noise, if you are hand booming the microphone, if you have it on a boom pole and you're queuing between different talent as they talk, uh, this microphone actually did quite well with its built-in or its included shock mount. It is not amazing, but it actually does pretty well. And any of the mics we talk about here actually generally are going to need a more sophisticated shock mounting system if you are going to do a lot of hand booming. In terms of warranty, it comes with a two-year warranty. You're now listening to the Audix SCX-1HC, which is a hypercardioid pickup pattern microphone. And in this particular case, also no high pass filter. In terms of weight, it comes in at 114 grams. And in terms of price, $500 USD approximately at the time of this comparison. Excellent, excellent build quality. This one actually definitely inspires confidence. In terms of power, it does require 48 volt phantom power and there also is no internal battery option. In terms of unique features, this is the smallest of the mics that we're comparing today. And 
Also, the foam windscreen is actually probably the highest quality of the microphones that we're looking at. In terms of the practical noise floor, using all the same parameters that we used on the previous one, again recording into a Zoom F8 with room tone and everything else, we came out at minus 63 dB. So this one actually is even better than the Samson CO2. In terms of handling noise, this mic did very, very well. Um, it's, it must have something to do with the design of the mic itself. So when you were hand booming, this mic it tended to handle handling noise very, very nicely. In terms of warranty, it comes with a three-year warranty. You're now listening to the AKG Blue Line with the CK93 capsule. This is also a hypercardioid pickup pattern microphone. This does actually have a high pass filter at 100 hertz, which is a nice but not too aggressive filter, which helps to sort of reduce low frequency rumble and noise without affecting the bass response too heavily. That's gonna come especially in handy when you're working outdoors in maybe just the lightest of breezes and when you're hand booming the microphone. In terms of weight, this mic comes in at 150 grams and the price at the time of this comparison was $480 USD. Build quality, also very, very good. In terms of power, it does require nine to 52 volts of phantom power. So you have some leeway there. I'm not sure in most cases these days whether you really need that, um, but you do have those different options. And of course, just like the others, there is no internal battery powering option. Unique features, this is a modular system with additional add-on capsules, including cardioid, omnidirectional, figure eight. It also has a minus 10 dB pad if you're going to be recording especially loud sound sources. For dialogue, not usually necessary, but it does make this microphone a little bit more versatile, so you could use it for other things as well. For our practical noise floor test, same exact methodology as the others, we found a noise floor of minus 64.5 dB, which was actually quite good. Handling noise, this microphone also did very, very nicely on that front when you are going to be hand booming it, and it comes with a two-year warranty. You're now listening to the Audio-Technica AT4053B, which is also a hypercardioid pickup pattern microphone. It does have a high-pass filter that sits at 80 hertz, which again is a nice, not too aggressive filter, which helps to reduce low frequency rumble and noise. It also does have a minus 10 dB pad, which helps if you're recording especially loud sound sources. In terms of weight, it comes in at 129 grams, and price is currently $600 USD. It does require 48 volt phantom power, just like all the other mics, and it does not have an internal battery option. In terms of unique features, it comes with a vinyl padded case, and uh, again, as I mentioned, a minus 10 dB pad, so those are the kind of unique features. In terms of the practical noise floor test, this microphone did extraordinarily well, and we, using the same methodology as we described before, came out with minus 68.7 dB, so very, very good. In terms of handling noise, it was good. I would say it was probably on par with the Samson CO2, but not quite as good as the Audix or the AKG. In terms of warranty, it comes with a one-year warranty. I should also mention, of all the microphones we've discussed so far, there are only two of them that I own. This is one of them, the Audio-Technica, but the other one I own as well is the Rode NT5, which we'll cover next. You're now listening to the Rode NT5. In this particular case, this is a different mic. This is a cardioid mic. So I wanted to put this one in here so you could hear the difference between supercardioid, hypercardioid, and cardioid. Cardioid is probably the least narrow pickup pattern, so it's more likely to pick up more ambiance, and you can probably hear that here. In terms of this particular mic, it does not have a high pass filter. It comes in at a mere 100 grams. So this is the lightest of the microphones we've looked at here in this comparison. And in terms of price, it comes in at $220 USD at the time of this comparison. The build quality is quite good, it's all metal. And in terms of power, it requires 28 to 48 volt phantom power, which almost any recorder or preamplifier should be able to provide. And it does not have an internal battery option. There's really nothing special about this mic <laughs> in terms of unique differentiating features, I guess, aside from the fact that it is a cardioid as opposed to a super, super cardioid. On the practical noise floor test, this microphone did extraordinarily well. When recording into a Zoom F8 with all the same methodology that we used for the other microphones, including room tone and everything else, this microphone came in at minus 72 dB, which is the best of all the mics that we've looked at. And I would just add here that uh, having a great noise floor is not the only aspect of a mic. <laughs> when I listen to these five microphones for indoor dialogue, this one is not a horrible choice, but it's probably 
not the one that I would use on a normal basis. And I should also say, in this particular case, I do own this mic, and I don't use it a whole lot for indoor dialogue. In terms of handling noise, if you're going to hand boom the mic, it does a good job. It's probably on the same part with the Audio-Technica and the Samson, but not quite as good as the Audix or the AKG. In terms of warranty, this comes with the industry-leading 10-year warranty. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. My kind of thinking on this is all of these microphones are actually pretty good. If I were to make a recommendation, I would say listen to all of them <laughs> and look at your budget and see which one of them you like the sound of best and what you can afford. So I don't think you can go completely wrong with any of these microphones. Can you do better than the Samson CO2? Well, yeah, if you have more, more to spend, I think some of the other higher-end mics sound a little bit better and they are a little bit cleaner and they're a little bit more sen sensitive. In my particular case, about a year and a half ago or so is when I bought one of these microphones. I ended up with the Audio-Technica. Do I regret that? I don't regret it at all. I think it's a great microphone and it's serving me very well in terms of my corporate video shoots. So again, hope that was helpful for you. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you get yourself subscribed for more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.